to pounce from that regard. And we're going to get right into it now. We've got Saw here on the T side. And as also what was brought up was that there are a lot of kind of heavyweight, older players here in the Portuguese scene from Saw in uh, Muteris and Roman and uh, Astralis. Again, they've got a lot to figure out. So... The setup right now for the CT side is Magisk. Holding down ladder, Dupree, sandwich player, Yugi. Getting popped at Ivy, and that's actually going to activate the split immediately. I think they're going to cancel their plans, whatever they had in store to work on map control off of this kill, and start to work their way out. However, the bomb is now receding, moving into the box holes, thinking about going towards the B site. We've got a man here at the top of Ivy on top of all of this. And it feels like the options are wide open for Saw right now. Astralis don't seem to know for sure what's going to come their way, but it is a fake towards inside. They're actually pushing through ladder and they're already crossing the E box. Magisk is gonna have a couple of very difficult pixel peak angle shots to be able to net a frag if possible and device back against the wall. USP in hand and two players peeking will take him down, not allowing him to get a kill. Dupree chimes in, he was fantastic on that first map. Magisk will also grab a headshot and that leaves it a three on two situation that suddenly becomes two on two. Magisk hit slightly low. The Dodo has the bomb, and he's trying to plant it. Magisk, he gets all of the kills. He cannot be stopped. This was a fantastic start for Saw to get that much map control, that many kills, and then all of it to be in vain, of course, as so much damage goes the way of Astralis towards the end, making that an easier round to win. You think when Device dies at the back of Ivy, there's no chance for him. And here's that instant replay. We're going to check out Magisk because he really just handles all of these different fights. Obviously, the IGL right now for Astralis, it's got to be a frustrating thing, especially when you come that close to winning a pistol round. You know, I famously played against I Buy Power a long time ago and uh, with my team. And it was a very humble team. We played in a qualifier tournament and uh, we won both pistols versus I Buy Power and lost 16-2. And that tells you a lot about how Sometimes easy it can be to win a pistol round, even if you're playing against a better team. So that may be Saw's, you know, one of their only chances to get a head start in this game. Yugi and Dupree firing off with the SMGs. Lots of money made here. Only one kill going to the M4. But overall, Saw, two kills in the round so far. Deagle still on the board. Chance for Arky to make it a majority death round. This would be fantastic, of course, for the T side. And keep the CT economy honest. One of the most important stats in these early rounds when we're playing CSGO is how many kills can you get with those pistols and force rebuys. If you kill only two, they don't have to rebuy. They can always afford to rebuy. If you kill three, that's when things get a bit hairy and the T's can keep the CTs within one of saving. At this moment, Astralis up now two and zero. They maintain the three alive. They upgrade a couple of guns and they've got some money left over in the bank. Saw will try to net a bomb plant if possible. They've upgraded to just P250s in this moment and i think the biggest travesty of all in that pistol round was the fact that they couldn't get the ultimate. ultimately snappy now pushing out getting a lot of information but the information is not worth the price of the price of his life he ends up dying the fast flank is here but with his teammate dead dupree is now in a precarious spot he does not want to fall but he won't he's got three kills with this smg oh my god the ace all ready to kick things off dupree fantastic plays by him and again if he dies 3v5 instantly his snappy's dead on the inside they can push to inner or outer and both sites can be relatively weak a really really rough start here for saw as dupree just lines him up and knocks him down like bowling pin fantastic work from him with this mp9 that is just beautiful and again you know one of the only silver linings for astralis in their match versus nip a little bit earlier so we're getting positioning here to set up for the outside smokes there are cts crossing throughout outside trying to recollect some information trying to trying to reclaim some information i should say magic in the front of the sandwich smoke kind of behind a uh behind blue uh looking to make sure nobody's in olaf this is the kind of thing you need to do on ct side when teams throw this first layer exec and device opens up the round for De uh, for astralis in total with this hot frag dry peak down ivy no chance for our men back there. This leaves Saw in a very tough spot. So how do they make up ground now? They are going to move out throughout the box halls. They've still got presence at Ivy, which I really appreciate. Sometimes teams, when they get thinned down in a lead like this, they jump too quickly to trying to pull off lurks. 
In this case, it feels like Saw are looking quite composed and are still thinking about how to carefully approach map control. You know, no team is perfect, especially not Astralis at the moment, and they should always hold out hope that they can force Astralis to make a mistake. And so here's Roman trying to get some of that information. Fortunately, Dupree, kind of one of the best ladder players and one of the worst threats they can actually have to fight. Man, he is doing so much work. Those are the two frags that'll really wrap this up. Matt just chimes in as well, finally getting his kill on Olaf, leaving just, 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 just to work this out for the one. And it seems like his time is limited device. Begins the round and ends it. Deagle kill to his name. And it's a, a tough spot because on one perspective, if you come into the game expecting to lose, you're going to play scared. And if you play scared, you play predictably. If you play predictably, you will lose. And that's what Astralis are hoping. On the other hand, if you rush too often, you maybe give up chances to get kills, which keeps rounds close, which ultimately breaks down the CT economy. But you've got to have this balance between the both to be able to have an overall sustainable path to victory. And so Saw needs to make sure they keep the tempos changing throughout this half, even if they are a little bit nervous. That's some great damage here, as we can see by the new HUD. Exactly how much damage is dealt from those nades and device. Another op opening off frag, opening op frag. And Magic Boy as well will combine in tandem with that kill to make this round look pretty pretty good here for Astralis. Ju Yugi is a next line of defense at the top of Ivy. He's been relegated to the Falmus. Great grenades come with the jersey, I guess. He drops one at the back of Ivy. It does one hell of a lot of damage. And there is a boost up on Ivy, just preying on the thought that Yugi might overextend just, just a bit too much. And look at this device. He's in the box walls. He's got an AWP. He's looking to push, potentially. And Muterus, does he know what's coming? Oh my god, does his, do his op senses tingle enough? Muterus, instant tech nine headshot as you see the little T-cap pop up at the bottom of his scope. That is quite a uh, funny sight. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And uh, Muterus now in a, in a 3v3 situation with an op recovered does make this a precarious spot for Astralis. They've rotated everybody inside. Yugi is playing flex in the Z, thinking about how to assist with the ladder cross, and Snappy looks like he's done believing that it's inside. Just in time for Saw to actually rotate out. He'll also get a kill from his new position in Ivy, and yeah, this is where things could potentially go from bad to worse. I think the off is in the right hand, so maybe Muterus. He can make a case for himself, but no, it's going to be snappy to grab all three. Comes off the back of fantastic rotates from Astralis to adjust by going from inside to outside. They have a good read on the situation at all times, and it feels like they're following Saw no matter, no matter where they're going. In that moment, they had... The rotate inside with three. As soon as Saw said, okay, let's not go inside, it might be a bit obvious. Saw went to back to ladder, back to T-Con, and Astralis were right there waiting for them at every single turn. So they're definitely playing a good read game right now. Astralis instantly on fire with a quick 5-0 start into this match. Now Dupree dropping the nade into the back of T-Con. Yugi pushing up box halls with the AWP. Fire lands at his feet. Ooh, player goes flying across device's screen. And the badminton reactions are not quite enough to be able to catch that kill. So Dupree here as the forward man outside. This is a mercenary. He's always alone. He's going to be in, uh, in ladder sometimes. You can't always expect to get traded. But you want to put one of your best fraggers. Entry fraggers are great here. We know Fur famously has championed this position. Dupree as well. And... These are, you know, players that are going to consistently win fights, and that's kind of all you want. You know, players who don't expect help. They aren't the, they aren't the needy. They are, they are the, uh, they are the, the, uh, the self. The, they're kind of like self-activating units of destruction. Do three. He's going to get the first kill off of an assistance flash. Drop a Molotov to push them back. Deny in information, but it looks like. He doesn't want to just deny information. He wants to get some information for himself as well. However, Roman will punish him for that peak. And this opens up the round a bit more for Saw. Device, wow, that was a chance to take out Just if he had been there just a moment sooner. Yugi can't trade in this situation. It actually pushed the CTs back a little bit. And the two new guys on the team, Snappy and Yugi, are going to try to perform some kind of retake. No, seems unlikely. Instead, they'll, uh, they'll just go for... 
what'll clearly be the save. Yeah, so by a... On a, this this round really rested on a knife's edge on a couple of those kills. I think, you know, following Dupree throughout the entire round would have told you that Astralis were doing quite well. Like he got the info, info on ladder, the first kill in T-Con, a lot of map control in T-Con. Maybe he pushed that to the limit a little bit, overextended it in T-Con to die. You know, maybe uh, on another day he definitely hits that shot. It's hard to say. But then you combine that with Device dropping his op kill in the IV and you say, okay, well, you know, we've got, a, we've got a real round here, and I think it all comes because of um, Saw's persistence at keeping all at keeping multifaceted levels of map control. Always keeping attention at Ivy, which is a thing that teams shy away from too often, to fighting back into T-Con, just in case there may be a push. And I think that needs to be underscored, that it is a, a highlight of Saw's play, that they are, they're making sure to have a very layered attack on train. And of course, because this is a best of one, we're always going to see a map that both teams are likely to want to play. And, and for Saw, I guess we can see why. So what happens now? We've got the fourth man set up outside. The first tier executes, as we can see on the uh, on the mini map outside, to deny any information in front of Sandwich. But the counter smoke plus the push up is able to kind of counter the, the 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 potential of that Sandwich smoke from the T side and force Saw to now look for info some somewhere else. There's been a lot of slow rounds here for Saw, and that's a bit. A bit worrying. You know, Astralis, they're going to hold on to grenades a lot longer. As we can see, they've still got three incendiaries left over. Dupree still has a smoke. They've got uh, three or four smokes in total. And that means um, and that means that when Saw do decide to execute, they have a high potential to get counter-grenaded. So I think the one thing I would say for Saw is they probably want to be a bit more unpredictable or at least feign presence you know throw some more utility in the early round to bait out the molotovs if possible to bait out some of the smokes that you of course only get to carry one of and from there move into executes but now the smoke down at ivy with 40 seconds remaining magis is going to have eyes trained on it like a hawk holding down this spot there's not a friend here to help him out. Yuki is on the other side of the smoke. First kill will not go his way. A great opening frag from Uterus. Yugi drops his smoke defensively to help him out. Movement around the ladder to get new lines of sight. He goes up top. It takes out his Sudodo. And that puts him in a great spot and his team in an even better spot. They can't make progress outside. It all comes down to Yugi's hold. Damn, man. Your play-by-play -play is getting better, Mohan. Oh my god, thank you so can, much for joining Can you hear us. me, buddy? <laughs> yeah? I hey, can, bud. Yes. Okay. How's it going? I heard you uh, I heard you say, you know, Yugi doesn't have a friend to help him out here, and I figured that would be my cue. So, Yeah, that was hello, my cry everybody. for help. That was my cry for help. Thank you. Hello. Okay, hey, man. Seven rounds deep, I see. Looks like uh, Stralis' match versus Saw is going a little bit better than it did versus Nip. I am ready to catch up with what I've missed. Take me through it. Okay, so basically, Astralis have been doing all the regular stuff, and uh, Saw have been moving fairly slowly throughout the round. Device has gotten three opening picks, including this round. So far, this match, all of those have resulted in the round win. Um, and so, Astralis are doing a great job of holding grenades, and there hasn't been much trouble. A lot of what you'd expect, I think, from, from this matchup. Ooh, all right. Well, snappy. Damn. Gets himself two kills on the bottom of ramp, and then also the assist for the deep grenade coming off of device. The dodo can't do much more than that, though. Yugi's gonna counter op him. Astralis to the seventh. Damn, they kept all of their grenades as well. The money's looking good for Astralis. Seems like I've come into a very one-sided affair. Great time for a pause. Yeah, yeah. Let's stop, let's stop and talk about this. So, is there anything to add, really? I mean. I think, uh, yeah, they're just, I think they're playing a bit too slowly, but one thing that's really cool, you know, Saw are gonna play Train, one thing that's cool is that they are giving a lot of love to all choke points on the map. So they're, you know, there's a lot of Ivy presence, and uh, there's a lot of Ivy presence, a lot of Tcon presence, a lot of ladder presence, a lot of box halls, people, and it feels like they are kind of keeping everything in check all the time. And I think the one round they won, it wasn't an eco round, but they did come close on one of the eco rounds. Dupree had an ace with an mp9 that's kind of impressive it's kind of cool yeah it was it was not it was not bad i mean if he died they probably would have lost the round so it's it was really a uh it was it was his mission impossible moments 
Seven to one, the inescapable scoreline. Back over towards yeah, B, it seems, but device is posted. One of those two ops, right? Oh my god, he's just gonna burn inside of it? Oh, down to the 20 HP mark, but still able to fade back. I mean, that, that, that just screams to me he's hungry to find this opening pick. Arky's going to creep inwards. One body shot anywhere with that Desert Eagle is going to take Device down. So, I, I mean, this is a duel that never looks favorable until you've got this sort of a situation. Snappy, he's able to peel off one. Device on the high ground, still looking to find a little bit of impact, but losing Snappy and being on 20 HP, he realizes he is in a really tough position. His rotators aren't necessarily that close just yet. Yugi trying to rattle off the op. But they've gotten their bomb plant. They're staying four alive. There's that M4 over on Roman as well. Now they decide to go for their peak, almost lining up the bodies. Device, he takes more damage, but he's still so low. Here's the peak up from just Tech 9 down on two. And Dupree has to clutch this. Smoke on top of the bomb. He could just drop uh, the flashbang he if he wants to... to serve as an insurance. Oh my god, he killed oh. it. Oh my god, he actually won that. He was, oh, he was just a. Wow, he was just a hair away from getting stabbed in the back. I, that is such a rough round to lose. They end up getting into the site, getting all the kills they need to. Two on one situation. Lots of time left over. Dupree doesn't even trade anyone, just jumps on it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dupree beats his chest. Sometimes he looks like Donkey Kong, and it was so funny because I think it was after they won one of the majors. I was like with them outside. Paula was there, and he was like, "Paula was like, yo, Dupree, what kind of music are you listening to on your headphones?" And he was like, uh, "Donkey Kong music." <laughs> it was like the Donkey Kong uh, theme music. <laughs> Actually, after they won a major, um, that's his favorite. That's, oh uh, wow! It's the secret, perhaps. Oh. Arky and Just. Bunch of kills over towards the B site, running that bomb down the ramp, already trying to get it in. And all the while, we have to worry about this lurk. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a big issue. Out of Z, perhaps, could come just device. Looking deep, trying to find this op shot to connect, but he's all on his own now. He's very wary of the flank and just walks away. Almost unfair what they are doing to device right now. He takes to the high side of the train. Looking for the deep angle, looking for the pick that could get him into this, but I think he's starting to realize this one is too far gone. He's just going to have to give it up. He's so desperate for something, but they give him nothing. Playing with device. Mm, obviously a great move to rotate uh, very quickly. Even if it's hurt to the back of ladder, there's not much device can do there to guarantee the kill. One thing they do grab is the four frags and also drop the off in that closing moment. So it's a nice win for a device to be able to stand in the site as it explodes and just to shave off uh, any little bit of economy that he can grab. But yeah, he gives it. Oh, here are some roaring fans. Yeah, this is the ultimate Zoom call right here. I love this. Look at him go. A bunch of Zoomers, just as loud as they were in Portugal last time we stopped yeah. by. I am not surprised to see them showing up in full force. So saw. I mean, do they have? Do they have a chance? They they won that round. It was a bit too close. Um, they're doing a lot more of the same so far, but the trades are getting a bit better. So I would like to hold out some hope. I think um, based on what we've seen, there there could be potential for a little bit of a closer half. That's a good opening kill for Marky, and the trade will come in. Snappy goes down one for one, but Dupree immediately comes up the ladder. But Magix ends up getting killed. I mean, this flank, it, it's worth its weight in gold, but not if you don't have teammates to cause a distraction. And the bomb goes down middle right. site. Muterus takes out Dupree. You, you said it. You said it perfectly. If you don't have those teammates to cause a distraction, it's not going to be as impactful. And you saw Dupree get checked just before he was going to stop the bomb planter by Muterus, who was moving forward, saw nothing ahead of him, figured why not check that flank. And sure enough... He sniffs out Dupree. That was going to hurt because this could have been Astralis stopping the bomb. It would have given Yugi a chance to play more individually and maybe they claw into it. But uh, hey, we're starting to see something happen here. Saw two rounds in a row, getting the score up to 8-3. It's still not their map, but it's better.
Yeah, very well said. Uh, it's definitely it's definitely better, and it just it comes down to are Astralis going to continue to take these aggressive options early on and give them a chance to get into the round, or do they want to try to tighten things up and, and play the and play the longer con situation? So I think uh, I think that's what it comes down to for Astralis. But as for Saw, because they spread out in their default, oh, the one tap camera. It looks it looks just like the forest camera. It was almost the exact same fight, which is just wonderful. So, uh, yeah, it, it comes down to how Astralis want to play. Are they going to push up again, or are they going to play back and let the round draw out into the 5v5? Um, I feel like from what we've seen from Astralis, now that Dad's not home, uh, that uh, the, the way that Magus has been calling has been a lot more faster paced, um, maybe more on the aggressive side. Maybe that's to ease up a little bit and to, to allow the players to be more in a, in a more comfortable space. And of course, limited practice time between the five that we're seeing on your screen. But uh, I think, as far as I'm concerned, anything can work if they do it well. Here on this round, Yugi has an AWP, but everybody else has just the pistols to work with. Um, and Saw still are just going to make sure that they aren't imploring one of their aggressive options one more time. It's this exchange of information in the T-Con, as we're so used to seeing, and Muterus seems aware of that fact as well. Just waiting him out. Just playing it patient, and now he activates. Clearing Dupree up close and personal. We're going to watch Astralis start to scramble here, trying to get those players back into the A site, looking to find some impact with the little that they have. And Yugi, well, he's already bagged the first one, so there is this tantalizing chance. Device with the Deagle, another kill off the frag grenade from Snappy. It's turned back to the man advantage, and Arky's looking for the frags up close. He's getting this pressure. He's feeling the heat, and can't quite connect his shots. Now he's dropped the bomb, and Muterus is going to have to do everything. Essentially a one versus three. Seven seconds left over. He has to go, go, go. And he knows Wait a second. Yuki <gasps> just jumps across and the time comes back to bite him. Astralis win the round. My goodness. Within just one bullet, he was so close. There's a couple of rounds here, including the pistol round, that uh, you weren't fortunate enough to see where it was just it came down to such low HP. There was actually great entries once again. But yeah, just these last waning moments and an amazing deagle shot from Device to ice him out. We could see him jumping away. That is so crazy how close he got to being able to win that. Yeah, I, a part of me can't believe that Yugi jumped over. I mean, he had two options. Either he stays into the close corner knowing that the last player is coming for him and just tries to hit the op shot at like the one second mark, or he guarantees that he can at least run away, but gives the chance of getting killed midair there. Uh, an unbelievable gull there from Yugi to make the play, but hell, it works. Astralis, nine rounds, six point lead, back in control, so it seems. Full double op setup, but Arky. Solo. Oh no, there's a second next to him. That is the bomb. And it doesn't mm. want to go downward seeing his device picks up the first kill. Maybe they were trying to bait the Z player into outside. And if they were going to spot no one there, they could have walked out. That could have potentially been the play. They had some IV presence. But uh, device, yeah, they didn't have a reason to rotate, I guess, because Astralis were fine with their forward A control and, and weren't so concerned with what was going on in IV at all. More kills being exchanged here. Magisk able to pick one up uh, through the side of the smoke. And Yugi, well, he's, he's a little pressured in this situation. So good job by Device to come over and alleviate one of the problems. But uh, just goes down. Roman answering up in the box halls. I mean, he's the bomb carrier at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. he can make this clutch play if he wants. But there's a player beneath him. They've got all the info. And he doesn't really have a way out, no matter where he heads. Yeah, he's he's definitely yeah he's a he's a cat in the corner at the moment being painted painted in and the device will stand in the same spot that he opened the round to close it out. So again, it's another easy round, you know, you'd say for a stroll. It's the default wins. It's it's an aggressive sneaky play from Saw that tries to work out. I think where they're missing a few layers is sometimes it's just striking a balance as I talked about a little bit earlier between going fast and uh, doing things slow in their default. And I feel like uh, a stroll is they're really gelling well with the fact that. Uh, Saw are taking slight risks, but without uh, any kind of serious 
potential for a fake, and uh, Astralis are just not biting on any of the small bits of presence uh, that they're making on other parts of the map. I, I feel like Saw, it would be great if they maybe committed a bit more uh, seriously to some of their fakes, but that is a that's a great shot. I mean, I mean, device. Yeah, he doesn't even stand a chance. Instant AK headshot down the ramp. Two players have rotated in behind them. Saw in these spots have decided to rock it back. They almost never act on their opening kill, um, and I think it looks like this time around they, they do commit down after a slight delay. Snappy, he's in a position to get a kill, but yeah, between the two flashes, he gets off. One from Dupree. Bombs drop, really no chance at all here for Arky. Smoke's gonna fade, and he's gonna have that little bit of an element of surprise, but trade frag, as expected. Astralis to the 11th. I mean, one more to go, and Saw, they desperately want this fourth one. Nothing would mean more, nothing would mean more. What is the buy? They've got uh, enough money to, they've got enough money to buy all the Blast merch that you could dream of. Okay, over at shop.blast.tv. They could get every every size and every color with the amount of money that they have. And I can't think of a better way to spend your money. Spend it all. Who needs savings? When you've got swag. Roman, back in from the ladder room. Oh, he finds a back turned in device. That's curious. You would have thought that Dupree could have had that covered from the trains. I mean, you see the grenade come in just a moment after. So they're, they're going to be looking at a way to recuperate the kills. And Dupree in from the corner. Ah, oh, poor Muterus. He walks right by the smoke, goes unchecked, and immediately we have Astralis back in with a man advantage. Magisk looking to single out just, but the Galil, of all things, bests the M4. He is lucky to be alive. They are lucky to be even 3v3, but they're also not committing off of anything just yet. Saw going to go back at the bomb, take their time. They've got a minute. We saw they tried a walk down ramp contact play in the past when they were high on numbers. This would maybe be a better situation to try it. They know that number one, uh, device is dead and he was a Z-Flex rotator, and they don't know if uh, anybody else would try to refresh his position or be as static down the A ramp as we saw in the past. So it looks like they are taking their attention over towards the B site. We'll see where the focus is, if it's towards the lower ramp or towards upper. And it'll put a lot of pressure on Snappy, who's deciding to play passive. It looks like Astralis are going to concede the site if they do decide to come in and maybe play for retake. So probably a good move here from Saw. Back behind the oil tankard, Snappy pushing up, and, and they haven't seen this. Roman, oh, he does look down, and he's going to get Snappy. This is that man advantage they'd be hoping for. Yugi, looking for the flashbang, looking for the exit, looking to create that space to move outwards, and he's not going to find it, so they swap the op over. This is going to open up Yugi. Let's see how his rifle work pans out. He has been impressing us, but he's off caught by Roman, peeking out for the headshot, leaving it all on Dupree. He's got nothing to lose here. He's got to play desperate. He's just going to sprint in as these terrorists undoubtedly take their fourth round. So, Saw doing enough. En Buddy, we are back with the second half. We've got an 11-4 half, a 19 kill half for Mr. Dupree. He has been fantastic today. And the only man from Saw just to get over 10 kills is 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 just <laughs> he's done it he's he's broken that margin and we could see the impact on some of those rounds he was doing a great job with the trades and saw they came close to winning a few of these rounds i think it's surprising to see that the half was only 11 for considering the pistol and other things but already into this one the t side is looking very strong this rush is is furious but we've got arky from up, up top to take down two and lure a third into the site. The bomb's gonna commit over now. Magisk comes through with a fantastic trade from long distance. Very unfavorable spot for him with the Glock. And there is a significant amount of map control for the T's here to work with. The CT's in a very rough spot. Just doesn't know that Snappy's here. And there's also the flank through Z and things go from bad to worse as the CT's drop like flies. But Sedodo has gotten himself on the defuse. Two seconds left over, Dupree trade Trades him through the smoke, and he turns his 19 kill half into 21 as we move right into round 16. Well, would you look at that? That is a pretty smooth start into the second half for Astralis, and it's another head-scratcher for Saw. Really sad to see because 
They had so many things go well for them in that pistol round. Once again, the bait into the back of sight by Arky, pulling the bomb here to commit. But then the answer back from Dupree to come around from Z. And of course this man, the closer, is going to be able to get the last kill on top of everything else. And Saw will have to decide now if they want to force up into the execute. And sometimes if you don't laugh, you will cry. As we can see from our man on the screen, Dupree looking very animated as usual. Astralis, we saw them buy majority SMGs in the first and second round. The second round, second and third round in the first half. Probably expect more of that into this one. Uh, as for Saw, what an eco strat can be is a question mark. They have enough to get scouts. What we normally see on train, of course, is the two scout buy that is complemented well with a couple of deagles, maybe a CZ and some nades. And the potential, of course, is very high if your scouts get a couple of tags. If your scouts get a couple of tags, everyone's within one shot. It's the great equalizer, really, these scouts. So it'll come down to if Astralis will spend too much time getting scouted or if they can do a good job of finding exploitable spots without exposing themselves to these dastardly scopes. And here's a replay from that second round that we were just talking about Dupree with the MP9. Grabbing an ace, snagging an ace. And another one of these tragic situations where the bomb diffuser narrowly escapes and it seems to be Dupree is kind of, uh, has, has, has run, the, run a series of tragedies in favor of Astralis and against Saw in, in that first half. So many counts of it. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame to see. It's a tough pill to swallow. We run this game back. I really, I really think we'd get a different uh, talent is versus Astralis. And not any Astralis, but an Astralis that's coming off of an upset and tr probably wanting to change the narrative. So Dupree very much, you know, connecting those shots, turning heads, rolling eyes. But right back into the action, folks, okay? Problem solved, and our game is underway. Astral is still very much in control, and, and Saw are just going to go for the absolute total hard save. They want as much of a chance in, in the few feeble gun rounds that they'll get. And I respect that. As do I, Connor. As do I. So, so yeah, they're, uh, I, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm, all, I'm actually also a little bit surprised that they didn't. I mean, we normally see teams buy in this spot, but yeah, best chance to win, I guess. Oh my gosh, and now, are they regretting that they didn't uh, overinvest? Because the USP is to chime in on these kills. There's three left in the CTs. They're all in pretty decent spots. They are taking spots of damage here, and the spokes are maybe pushing them into their death. But yeah, that, they actually came so close at those first two kills. You're like, oh man, maybe we shouldn't have, maybe we should have invested all the way. Maybe we should have got, uh, uh, we should have, we should have got armor armor, maybe a flashbang to even throw out to what was left there, because I mean, Astralis, they, they didn't try to make it overly technical once they had lost those first couple of kills. They just continued on the same trajectory, they continued outwards on the same path, and uh, well, you see it here at the end, just shooting the feet from beneath the train yard. So, one flashbang comes out of Z, everybody's blind, maybe the counter terrorists are able to force them to scramble, but none of that made possible by just the straight up vanilla save. But the whole beauty of that round was, of course, to transition into this. Tons of weapons, tons of grenades, and yet still, Snappy's able to open up towards this B bomb site. He just fires down the ramp, gets his opening pick, and unfortunately for Saw, I think that the idea of saving these guns is already way too tantalizing for them to try and go for the retake. But even everything they have may not be moved forward. Magisk still lurking and finding at least one more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, definitely not doing too bad in that position. So, uh, weird, weird, weird spot in the save. They are going to be hunted down. This could be quite a, quite a curious situation for the CTs, depending on how Astralis approach this. Down Ivy is probably what Saw won the most. So maybe, yeah, Sedoto is going to chime in, get an off frag, and uh, decentivize them from going on the hunt. They'll have to eat tomorrow, not today, not, not tonight. Bomb pops off, seven survivors. So, Saw, you have a very long, windy road of a comeback. Good for them, they kept that AWP. At the very least, you know, not even gonna have to just resort to straight up rifles. Very curious to see if they can employ it for that opening pick. But uh, Magisk just being a nuisance here, not letting them get away with everything they'd hoped for. 
At the same time, reserve from Astralis. You know, they could have really tried to force the issue and cleared out all the weapons, knowing the impact that it would have had here in the follow-up. But they let it go by, and probably because they are still confident in this spot. Why wouldn't they be? A little bit of early grenade damage. Device hunting for an opening pick, but nothing to be found in the box halls. That's true, yeah. The box halls are empty. There's nothing but inventory here, and... Yeah, but they are looking for bodies, Device. Popping off into a, a powerful position. Wow, they, they allow the T's to get a lot of ground here, not expecting this push. But it's the T's to also not expect to push from the CT side. Roman pops off with those two frags. Three on three situation. It's actually not a bad spot for both teams. Yeah, but Dupree, I mean, they're so far out from Z already. Maybe he wraps around this smoke. He's nervous. He's in a tough spot. But all the while, we do have Stadoto pushing up onto the bomb site. Dupree behind them. He's going to turn his back. Deals with the man on the bomb. Now looking for the last one, but just answers. And Magisk, he's going to have to finish out this round. He's going to have to secure Astralis, their 15th. He's got the flashbang to do it. He still plays towards ramp. Just time burning down, and now he's gonna have to force the issue. Oh, and he eats it, fully white. Can't see a damn thing. Desperately gets on top of the bomb. He's gonna try to defuse, and Magisk is having none of that. Eight, yeah, 16th frag for Magisk, and a 15th round for Astralis. You know, Dupree is a real two-way player, man. We've seen him be so fantastic on the CT, CT side, and now he's transferring those skills over this way. A very valiant attempt there by Roman to come, come through when it felt like the entire site was compromised and get a little bit of extra damage in, but uh, it's all consolation kills. Astralis find their 15th. Another one uh, slips slips through their grasp just slightly, like they were trying to uh, trying to grab sand there. So, so sad for us all. They touched it, but they couldn't hold on and now they might be in a situation where they could lose 15 to 4 especially with entries like these however a trade back from just means there's still hope some hope even for roman who's very much pinned in behind these boxes yugi's got him tagged up somewhat but not looking to force the issue astralis seems like they want to collect their numbers Device even trying to find this angle on the outer yard, but nobody giving him the shot he hopes for. Molotov to slow down any sort of a push. And Saw at least have some forward positioning here, not only inside of the ladder room, but also close on the exit of Tcon. Device, however, very good at doing exactly this, unraveling bomb sites, weaponizing patience waiting for the time but oh the oh. flash isn't good enough to get the kills it's a great flashbang but it's denied by yugi he saves it grabbing himself that second frag stododo trying to now move away from the e-box the wild mp9 spray just gets away from him and roman has to clutch this if they want to keep going which he seems to as he takes two and looks for that last one yugi who saved them inside of tcon has to save them in the clutch and he'll do exactly that 